ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Watch Addiction Watch Reviews. Today in front of you I have two interesting watches from a smaller brand that's producing Swiss-made watches in Australia, Crew Automatic. You may have heard of them, they are kind of hyping up lately, and um, some of the other channels have reviewed them as well. And I figured I'd give you my take on the watches. These are two um, review examples that were sent to me by Crew Automatic, I am not keeping these. And um, yeah, one's on the rubber strap, which is really nice. Uh, these are integrated, all the straps and bracelets, as you can see here. And this is the diamond back model. As you can see, very reminiscent of a diamond back um, in the bracelet and on the actual brass dial, uh, which is pretty cool, some gold accents as well. Very Gerald Genta-ish style. It's a 50 meter water resistant watch. It's not a dive watch. It's a kind of casual, um, kind of a sporty dress watch, I'd say. Um, one that can definitely be worn with a suit or with, you know, with a pair of jeans. It kind of really goes with anything, in my honest opinion. And they are producing their watches in Switzerland, hence the Swiss on the dial. And they're using a pretty cool movement as well, uh, which I haven't experienced so far in my years of doing this. Um, let's see what I'm wearing today and we'll get a little further into this. Today on my wrist is the good old faithful 18038 uh, day date uh, Rolex or the president bracelet Rolex or the president um, yeah I bought this one about three years ago this was my uh, not my last watch purchase I believe I bought the 16570 and I sold the 16570 Explorer 2 and I kept this um, this one has been you know keeping decent time and it's in pretty good condition the bracelet which is a big thing when buying one of these watches but definitely a stunning watch it has a patina the dial has patina the markers at least a little bit and um yeah just a classic day date 18038 let's get back to the crew automatic so the crew automatic is crafted of solid 316l stainless steel it comes in a very nice presentation black lacquer box i will throw it up on the screen right now you can see it also does come with your nice warranty card and all your paperwork inside. It's a pretty nice packaging, I must say. The price point's about eighteen fifty. Uh, that's in U.S. dollars. Um, but you are getting a you know an entry level luxury watch. I would say the quality is definitely there for the money. And I was really surprised by this model. I'm I'm not even lying here. The quality is outstanding for the price. And unless you get it in your hands, you're really not going to see that. And let's start off with some basic specifications. So this is the Diamondback CA06, the green variation. It's a stainless steel case, and it has a nice PVD clear coat, um, which basically means you're not going to be able to really scratch this thing. It's going to stay minty, minty, minty for a very long time. As you can see, this model has been to many reviewers already, and there's really not a scratch on it. It's pretty cool. Um, so definitely kudos to them for doing that. Um, I really don't see that that much. Some of these Seiko watches I know do their own type of coating, anti-scratch coating on the steel. Um, this is their own way of doing it, I assume. Anyway, the case is 40 millimeters in terms of diameter there. It is 10.5 millimeters thick, so an extremely thin watch. We get a nice flat sapphire crystal with inner anti-reflective coating, which is always better than the outside, because when you put the AR coating on the outside, you kind of get a lot of glare. Um, but this one is super legible, literally in all lighting, all positions. Um, you can always read the time on this watch. Uh, so we have the sapphire crystal in our air coating. We get 50 meters of water resistance. So like I mentioned, this is not a dive watch. It has a screw down crown and a screw down case back though, just for that 50 meters of water resistance. Not something you're gonna wanna jump in the pool with, but something you can definitely you know, feel safe walking in the rain or washing your hands with. Um, but I definitely wouldn't take it uh, swimming with me. That's a definite right there. Now, this watch comes on the integrated bracelet. Um, it also has an integrated rubber strap version, and the integrated rubber bracelet, as you can see, follows the whole diamond back theme. As you can see, these polished center portions over here, it really does match the design on the dial as well, which is a brass dial with applied markers and some nice blue loom as well. We'll get more into the dial a little bit closer. As you can see, the bracelet has crew automatic with a safety clasp here, and then it pops right open. Very solid, very good quality. You can feel it and pretty much a butterfly clasp. You can get a glimpse of the automatic Swiss made uh, movement inside of this watch, the Swiss Tech Automatic Caliber. And it's one I haven't seen before, the nice custom gold rotor, uh, rotor to match that crown. Screwed down, brushed on the back as well. This is held down over here, standard spring bars with this bracelet. You can release it. I'm pretty sure you can buy an extra rubber strap if you really wanted to. But the bracelet's really comfortable, it's very flexible. It feels very nice, the finishing. There's no sharp edges or anything like that. I think they did a pretty good job on the actual bracelet. Um, 
that's a big thing when it comes to integrated bracelet watches. If you don't have a good integrated bracelet, it's really going to ruin the watch. And they really did a good job on this one. The polishing is very nice too, as well as the brushing. And it's the same exact finishing as the case. So you're not getting a lesser quality finish on the bracelet as the case, which some brands really do skimp out on. Now the crown itself is signed and screwed down with the CA Crew Automatic logo. Nice uh, crown guards here, as you can see, protruding from the case. The case has chamfered polished tops, which is really nice. I think that was a nice little detail that they did there. And these sides of the stationary bezel, or the porthole style bezel, are actually polished as well. So let me go to the other side, you can see the finishing right here. The finishing is very good, very smooth, as well as the brushing on the actual flanks of the case. So no issues there with the finishing. I think it's up to par, especially for 1850. I think you're getting your money's worth. Now, um, the movement inside of this watch is a Swiss Tech Caliber. So as you can see, if I get you a little closer, it's very familiar to an Eta 2824. Um, as you can see, the balance wheel going off there. But they have a nice crew automatic custom rotor, which I think looks really, really nice. I think they did a pretty good job on that. Uh, the engraving is really detailed and spot on there. And yeah, just an overall nice looking movement. About 33 joules in this caliber. We get hand winding, we get hacking, we get about a around a 38 hour power reserve I, I got out of this one. Um, power reserve is definitely keeping yeah, good power. I haven't had any issues so far. I've been testing this one for about a week and a half wearing it, and it's been a pleasure. Uh, the case back as well just has some basic specifications. Swiss made, water resistant, five ATMs, your model number, and diamond back as well. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty good in my eyes. Oh, on a macro level, getting into this dial, as you can see, we have our sweeping seconds down at the six o'clock position where it states diamond back. I think that's pretty cool they fit that all in there. That is applied as well, as well as the crew automatic over here. All applied markers filled with loom, uh, pretty decent loom. I will get you a loom shot towards the end. Nice circular window with a black date wheel and white numerals. You get these screws over here, but I believe these don't do anything. They're just kind of there for show which is okay. Um, but yeah, everything is very neat. And you said really nice design on the dial, like a diamond back. And I think that's really, really cool. Um, I haven't seen a dial like this yet. I don't believe pretty typical, um, sword style hands. Um, yeah, they match the markers. I think they did an okay job. The markers themselves are bordered with a nice polishing. You get zero through 60 on the chapter ring and yeah, everything really looks kind of together. Nothing looks out of place and the movement itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew the crown here. No issue there, a nice size crown. First position, we can give the watch some juice here. It is already running, as you can see down there. One position, we get a quick set date with this movement. Final position, you get hacking, and we can change the time here. So no issues there. Everything functions as it should on these uh, review units. We go around, I'll set it to 10, 10, how about that? 10, 10, push that back down. Screw the crown back in. And no issues, everything is very well put together on this watch. And that's the first thing I noticed when I really took it out of the box. It felt like a great watch straight out of the box. And I can pretty much tell when I pick a watch up and have about 30 seconds with it if it's going to be a good watch or not. Anyway, um, well, how does this watch actually wear? What is the loom like? My wrist is 6.5 inches. We have a 40 millimeter case here. And lug to lug with, if you really want to know, is about 47 millimeters. So I know already it's going to wear nice on my wrist. And I've been wearing it already, so... <laughs> Um, you know, I know it wears nice on my wrist. Anyway, let's start on my 6.5 inch wrist. I'll show you exactly what this version looks like and we'll take a look at the rubber strap integrated version as well. Same exact watch, just has the nice genuine rubber uh, integrated strap, which is really a pleasure to wear. Now there she is on my 6.5 inch wrist. Now I don't know how many links came with the watch because this is a review unit, but I did remove one link from the past reviewer. I'm not sure what wrist size he has. But um, yeah, so I'm assuming I have two links from each side I'd remove from my 6.5 inch wrist. And it fits very nice. The bracelet is really comfortable. Across it fits just fine and sits pretty flush on the wrist. Definitely can slip under a cuff there. And that bracelet just kind of shimmers with the light, which is really, really nice. I think that's pretty cool there. As well as the dial. The dial in different lighting, as you can see, changes different shades of green. That nice brass custom dial. I really do appreciate that. It's really cool. At night, it looks a bit different. During the day, it looks a bit different. And in low lighting conditions, in highlighting conditions, the green always changes from in to out. I think it's pretty cool. But yeah, definitely comfortable. The clasp is comfortable as well. It doesn't pull hair. This bracelet is using the pin system, uh, which some might disagree with. 
but it works and it's easy to adjust. I hate the I hate those ones that use the collars. Those are horrible. I would definitely have this over that. Um, but yeah, there it is on my 6.5 inch wrist. No issues with the fit. Now before we take a look at this rubber version right here, I'm gonna go throw up a loom shot so you can see what the loom looks like. And here we go. So the loom is pretty evenly applied. It does glow blue on the hands, on all the applied markers, and on the little portion of the subdial, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, the loom is not like Seiko loom or right loom, right, right, but it's good enough for this style of watch. Obviously these markers aren't as big, so you don't have as much room to apply, but the loom does last a pretty long time. Now getting to the rubber version of this watch, as you can see, it comes on a very nice integrated rubber strap, which is just really, really flexible as you can see here. And it's extremely comfortable. I think this is a little bit more comfortable than the bracelet version, in my honest opinion. Even though the bracelet's comfortable and you can wear it every day without issues, this rubber integrated strap is extremely comfortable. And we even get a nice custom buckle here get you in over here, it says crew automatic, nice size buckle, and two safety keepers. Here on the back side of the strap, you have the logo again and crew automatic. You can get a better glimpse of the caliber on the rubber version. As you can see there, crew automatic, 33 joules, model CA06185. And yeah, just very clean, no issues, no smudges or anything like that. There's the rubber version on my 6.5 inch wrist. Obviously it's gonna be a bit lighter than the stainless steel version, but it still has a very nice presence and the rubber strap is extremely comfortable. Don't worry about breaking these things in. Straight out of the box, you're good to go. They're strong, but extremely flexible at the same time. I'm not sure where they made these or how they made these, but it's genuine rubber and they're very, very comfortable. And I was quite surprised by that. So yeah, there it is on the rubber strap, a bit more sporty. You know, but definitely, you know, you could still wear it with the suit, probably. Not that many people even wear suits nowadays with the uh, crisis. A lot of people are working from home, probably wearing their pajamas. Um, but anyway, it's definitely very comfortable on the rubber integrated band as well. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. What do I think of the Crew Automatic Diamond back? I think it's a very well-made watch. It's very well put together. You know, the quality is definitely there. You're getting that nice coating over the stainless steel, a custom brass dial, which you won't probably see ever again. I mean, um, name another watch brand that's making dials like this. I don't think, it's gonna be hard to find one. You know, for the price, you're getting a Swiss-made watch with a Swiss Tech movement, which is a very good automatic Swiss caliber. The watch is Swiss-made. It feels like Swiss quality. It does not feel like micro-brand quality, if you know what I'm talking about. This definitely feels like it comes out of a, you know, a production house that's been doing this for years, and that's always a good sign. There are only a couple brands I can really say that about in the smaller watch brand industry, and um, you've probably seen it on my other videos. But I think they did a great job on this model, and um, I believe they sold out um, on a couple of their models already, and people are really trying to get these. But they do have some models in stock. I will drop a link to their website in the description below. If you want to check them out, they are supposed to come out with some new models as well. Uh, the owner did tell me that. So definitely looking forward to that and see what they have to offer the watch community for the next couple of years. And um, yeah, other than that, no quality control issues. This one is keeping plus eight or nine seconds a day, and this one's keeping about plus seven seconds a day. But once again, these are review units. They're bashed around. They're you know shipped all over the world, and it's not going to be probably the same as one you buy from their website, even though that's perfectly in spec. Um, you know, with a decent automatic watch, and these aren't COSC certified, so you know you're not expecting the minus four plus six or Rolex. You know, accuracy there. These are eighteen fifty. These are $10,000, uh, but they definitely are a great watch for the money, and I think you would really be quite surprised by the quality when you pick this thing up. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below, as usual, and I will get back to you there. Throw the video a like if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of interesting content coming up. Hope to see you guys real soon. Thanks so much once again for tuning in. I will see you guys later. Bye.